Lego. It's what we all played with as kids, it's what we all play with now, and it's what's been the subject of many successful Hollywood blockbuster movies. This is quite a large Lego hand. This is toilet paper. It's what we wipe our butts with when we go poop. How do you combine Lego and toilet paper in a way that would be awesome? We're going to explore that right here on 3D Printing Nerd. This episode of 3D Printing Nerd is sponsored by Skillshare. A while ago, I had a project in mind where there was this really cool Lego toilet paper holder mini fig thing. And uh, according to my notes, it was a model on Thingiverse by user VVK187. So I printed some parts. I printed the head. That's the head of a Lego. Here's some pants, Lego pants. Lego body and some appropriate sized Lego hands. Uh, these, like I said, these were printed a while ago. So the head itself, this thing right here, the head, printed like this, and it was printed on the Raised 3D N2 Plus. It was 215C on the nozzle, 62C on the bed. It was printing at 60 millimeters per second. It had three perimeters and it was 10% infill. The hands themselves, the little Lego claw, they are uh, the same. 215, 62, 60 millimeters per second, three parameters, 10%, but it's not heads. The Ultimaker 3 is what blessed us with this print. This is in high five blue. 215C on the nozzle, 60C on the bed. According to Cura, it was 80 millimeters per second. And uh, if you listen to the audio from the original recording, I actually instruct Sean to make up some stats. I don't know, make up some stats. Last, and certainly not least, we have to talk about the pants. I'm, some people call them legs, I'm calling them pants. Uh, these were printed on the Pulse XE, two perimeters, triangle infill, 10% on that triangle infill, and at 201C on the nozzle, uh, this is in, I believe, Matter Hackers PLA, and this is the High Five Blue. This was Ray's 3D, maybe? I don't remember. And this is what our Lego minifig looks like. It's fantastic. It looks great. You could put some black on the eyes and the mouth, uh, but other than that, we're pretty good. We could glue or gloop the legs here. We could glue or gloop the hands here, and we would have ourselves a very successful toilet paper holder. This isn't a story of how prints go perfect every time though. This is a story about incorrect slicer settings and what you can do to fix those. Case in point, I've got a Matter Hackers lime green PLA body here. More Lego hands or Lego claws. I happen to have another head because two heads are better than one, but uh, I printed this in some Matter Hackers gray PLA. These are Captain Stringy Pants right here. This is terrible. I had had the nozzle too hot on the Pulse XE and uh, I forgot to set retraction. That is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So it just oozed plastic all over the place. So our goal is to get this similar to this one. I started to post-process this where I took out some of the strings. I was able to sand it down a little bit and I got to a point where I stopped and I said, wait a minute, you might like to know how to do this. So let's take this and make it look like this and then maybe we paint it and then maybe we put it together Maybe we install it and maybe we test it. The first step in making these pants glorious and less stringy is to get rid of the strings. You can use your hands, you can use a mechanical method. It's just the strings are there and you want to get rid of as many as possible. A lot of people like to use a heat gun when getting rid of the strings on their prints and I recommend that as well. We're going to be doing that, but I wanted to get rid of the majority of the strings. It just seemed to be an easier thing. We have a pile of little PLA strings right here and we have a model that is ready for a bit of a heat gun. I'm gonna bring out the heat gun. This is a Wagner heat gun. I picked it up at my local home improvement store. I don't have an affiliate link for it, but if you go to your local home improvement store, there's a really good chance you're gonna find a heat gun similar to this. I'll put a link to this one at Amazon just in case you don't wanna leave your house. Maybe you don't wanna put on pants Maybe you have Captain Stringy Pants. I don't know. With a heat gun, it can get too hot for many materials. This is PLA, and PLA, as you know, melts pretty easily compared to ABS or PETG or what have you. When heating it, move the heat gun around. You don't wanna leave it all in one place or else the pants will melt. It's not a good thing. You wanna transfer as much heat from this gun 
to the little PLA strings that are around, you'll see them start to shrink up a little bit. You don't want to hold it in one place. So let's, let's see if we can do this. Ow. Ow. That's pretty hot. I wonder. That is 400 degree air, 400 degree Fahrenheit. So that's what, 20 C? Uh, so that's hot. That is hot enough to melt the, that's, that's hot enough to melt the filament to actually extrude it, isn't it? It's, or close to, uh, it's no match for, PLA is no match for that temperature. So we just have to be careful when we're moving it around because that is hot. Caliente. Ready? You'll see st strings kind of shrink up. Can you hear that a little bit? The, the plastic is, uh, the heat is actually causing the plastic to expand and it's making little crackling noises. It's fun. Uh, after you're done moving it around a little bit, you end up with these little nubs of uh, essentially PLA that are on the model. Rather than use a fingernail, because PLA splinters suck, I would suggest mechanical means of removing it, whether that's with a knife, an X-Acto, sandpaper, you get the idea. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. We've gotten the initial part done. We've removed a lot of the strings and we've taken some sort of sharp blade. In this case, it was an X-Acto knife and we've kind of drawn it along to get the little, the little bits out. What I like to do at this point before starting sanding is to grab my heat gun and just give it a quick little once over and that will just cause any small bits that I may have missed to shrink up and hopefully go away for good. Now what we need to do is take a look at our model. In this case, it's the Lego Man pants and it's time for some sanding. You can kind of see if the light reflects, you get some pillowing because of the triangular infill and the low number of top layers because it printed like this. You get this pillowing and there are many different ways where we can remove that, but there's also the roughness around this part. There's a little kind of a, a pillowy part right there that we can sand down and the edges just to take away some of it. So before I get started though, one of the tips that I want to tell you about sanding PLA, uh, you can't usually use mechanical ways of sanding it because it melts at such a low temperature. And so what you're going to want to do is get some 220 or 400 grit sandpaper. You can even go as low as like 150, 100 if you want to really get it down and you want to sand it. You want to be assertive, but slow in your process. What you can do to remove some of that heat while you're sanding is actually wet sanding. It's just plastic after all. So if you dip your sandpaper in some water and then you sand it, that will make sure it doesn't heat up too much and you'll actually be able to sand the material further rather than melting it and pushing it around. For me, I don't have any water right now, so we're just gonna dry rub it. I hate sanding. One of the things that a lot of people who do this professionally will tell you, A, sanding sucks, it's just a way of life for them, but B, PLA is one of the worst materials to sand. That's why you have people like Harrison Cricks from Vulpin Props or Bill and Brittany Duran of Punish Props. They use a lot of ABS. ABS is phenomenal to sand. Future Joel is telling Joel in the past, you should have used ABS. Uh, oh, now, I'm, now I'm getting misty. I'm getting misty over here. Oh, I made a mess. Good. Here we go. This is what we have right now. Uh, I could have sanded it a lot further. I'm tired, we have a limited amount of time, but sand as much as you want to sand your model. Because uh, I just wanna give you an idea, and because this is just Lego pants for a little guy that holds the toilet paper when I go boom boom, I don't really care. I don't really care if it's eSport trophy smooth. It's pretty smooth right now. Here, Sean, feel that. Ooh, yeah, that's actually, that's not bad at it's all. It's actually not bad, is it? Yeah, right. you, you were worried, weren't you? Was... You legit were like, I'm just gonna touch this. And you're like, oh. Yeah. One of the other things that I wanna mention, I didn't sand this up here. And that's because there's no need to. You're not gonna see it. The Lego guy here, he just, that's where glue is gonna go or gloop or whatever. So there's no need to really sand it. Should be just fine. Uh, what I can do at this point is rub it down with a, with a towel and some water or some isopropyl alcohol or something just to kind of get the last bits out. There's a few more little pieces that I do want to sand off. I want to get the final bits out. We also have an option of this. This is 3M Acryl Green Glazing Putty. And if you look at it, it's going to be, and then it's going to be green. It's kind of a little bit green. And what you can do is put that over certain areas that you want to fill in. 
I don't want to use it on this model. Filler primer, sanding and painting is going to be fine, but this stuff is recommended by a number of people who I intimately trust with prop and cosplay and 3D printing assembly knowledge. So I will put a link in the description and this will get seen a lot more on the channel. And I'll teach Sean how to use it too. Can't wait. <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually not bad at all. Let's head to the garage and hit it with some filler primer, see how it looks. Down here in the garage, what I wanted to show you real quick, we're gonna spray the filler primer and the paints outside of the domicile. But what I've done is I've drilled a little hole through this part right here. This allows me to stick a wire through. Please go through, please go through, please go through. <laughs> wire goes through. And now what I can do is twist it just a few times. There we go, I guess once will do. And that will hold the piece. And this way I don't have to hold it and spray paint it. I can attach it to something and then hit it with the spray paint or I can hold it up here and hit it with the spray paint and not worry about touching the filler primer while I'm spraying it. So at this point, I put enough filler primer on the model. Remember, filler primer is meant to be sanded down a little bit. So like it says, it's high build primer. So it builds up on the model and you're meant to sand away the top of it where the primer then stays where you don't sand away. So it fills in the gaps. We filled in most of the gaps here. The model looks pretty good. Uh, you can tell right here and right here, it might need some of that green putty, we'll know. So we're gonna use the 220 grit sandpaper. We're gonna sand down the high build primer to a point where we can either decide to put more primer on or we can just go ahead and paint it and test it out. Let's do this. I didn't have a respirator on and originally I was gonna say, you know what, this is gonna be quick. I'm not gonna put a respirator on. I'm not gonna worry about it, but why not be safe when you could just be safe? And at that point, I think we're done. And let me take this off. Oh, that was a good idea because as you can see right here, there was a lot that comes off. It's not, um, it's not uncommon to completely sand down your first, your first layer of high build primer. Sean and I had a, uh, a poll on the Twitters asking people. He said it for a whole day, 24 hours. I don't know why he did that, Sean. Whoops. We did another high build primer layer and then I, I was able to sand it off and you can tell that's filled in there much better. If you run your finger over it, it's much, much smoother. I think this is ready for paint and I think we're gonna do red. Ooh, good toss. There it is, let's see, instructions. Uh, we're gonna spray it outside, we're gonna do a couple thin coats and we'll build up the color on this pair of Lego pants. Let's do it. So you can tell right here, I actually put more than I should have because it's starting to drip just a little bit. My goal was to put light layers and I went a little heavy right there. It's okay though, I think it'll be all right. We will uh, we'll let the sun cure this a bit and see what happens. Well, that second coat of paint is drying in the garage. What I figured it'd be good to do is get measurements. What we need to do is measure from hook to hook or hand to hand or palm to palm or whatever Lego people have. And I need to measure that because what we need to do is cut this PVC pipe to length. So let's bring over this person and I'm using a metric tape measure. So I'm getting cool units of measure, I guess. So I just want it to be longer than this and it is 19 cm. So I figure I'll cut 22 cm just so I have a little bit sticking out on either side if the hands are in this configuration. Let's go cut it. Hey, you know, I'm walking the dog right now because it's not all about uh, eating what you want. You gotta get some exercise. And that's especially true when we talk about cookies. I love sugar cookies. And Allie Tinsley on Skillshare has this class on how to make a really good sugar cookie. Skillshare is also the sponsor of this video. They're an online learning collaborative site that has 25,000 different courses on business and design and how to, and apparently how to make a really good sugar cookie. What's really great is for 10 bucks a month, you get access to all of this content. And you can learn how to make sugar cookies or how to make money on YouTube or how to edit videos or how to color correct or shoot, how to run a business even. Get started right now by clicking that link down in the description. No, <laughs> no. And the first 500 people that do it get a two month trial absolutely free. Again, a big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Maya and I, we're gonna start running, so we'll see you later. A little handsaw. It's gonna be the easiest way to cut it. Some sandpaper, we can kind of get the edge. Ha ha! Got it, this is done. This is 22 centimeters of PVC pipe. This is what the toilet paper will go on and the little Lego man is holding it. See when the paint's dry. Look at that, looks like we have dry-ish pants. And uh, 
there's the bar to go between the hands uh, and just just to show you look at that <laughs> okay so remember we started off almost here this is where the sanding happened and we've now gone to the point of having red pants very red pants fits pretty darn well oh, red was a good choice uh so now we need to gloop it up and i'm gonna wear gloves but it's a lot of gloop okay yeah we're quick jeez i don't need to like hold it down i don't think do i oops it's fine everything's fine so do we want the head to be looking somewhere or do we want it just to be kind of i think i think it should be looking across because otherwise it's creepy oh you mean if it's turned if it's turning like looking at you while yeah. you're while you're pooping on the back what i can do kind of come up here and just do a little like right there i don't know if that'll work too well because there's the paint but it might seep in or it might just strip the paint <laughs> my 3d gloop is now red <laughs> so with these i think if you put this in, maybe like so, right? If you do that, and then someone really rolls the toilet paper, is that going to come out? I think I do I need to gloop these? I think you need to gloop those. I am like a bull going through a china shop. While that is setting, I know just what I need to do. This is not a big Sharpie. This could take a while. That's all right, right? Sure. The real Lego dudes are have these dark soulless eyes, right? Okay, look at that. That's not bad. That's not bad. There it is. Our red Lego pants, our red pants Lego, our Lego red, our red pants Lego person. Let's see, so then we can do, wait a minute. Oh no. <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> doesn't rotate. Oh my god, I would hate to be in a situation. <laughs> like, can you imagine if you had an emergency poop and you're like pulling at this, pulling at this, and it just, it won't rotate. It's my worst nightmare. This is a jumbo sized toilet paper roll from Costco. I mean, there's going to be other toilet paper out there that'll fit. Let me, I'm going to go get more toilet paper. All right, here we go. This is a roll that's had some use on it. If you look, it's smaller in diameter and it should hopefully work with this i give up <laughs> can't be this can't be the end of the video look let's be honest toilet paper comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes colors textures just like humans i'm sure there is toilet paper that would fit this lego human and when i do find toilet paper that fits this little lego human lego human lego human we're gonna run with it then i will get it installed in a bathroom and used because it's got these little holes in the back yeah two screws in a wall and Mr. Lego person is just there happily holding your toilet paper. Look, I'm gonna consider this a success. We have successfully shown off how you can take a print that could have been a failure, but instead used techniques to actually make it look pretty good. When you paint something that's been 3D printed and, and you notice that there are details that you've missed, it means you just haven't sanded as much. If you talk to any of the prop builders, they will tell you that if you, when you think you're done sanding, you're not done sanding. Uh, I, I did enjoy this. Sean and I had a really good time, right, Sean? It was, fun, yeah. it was a lot of fun and we learned a little bit and projects like this are something I would love to feature more on this show. I think it's a lot of fun to learn how to take 3D prints and other materials and combine them, change them, mix them, use them, do fun stuff like that. So uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call this good if you have smaller toilet paper if you have we'll say four and a quarter four and a quarter inches across the arms here of the lego person and uh so four and a quarter inches 2.54 centimeters per inch oh, no, two and a half times four is ten. Ten. Yeah. Ten. Yep. ten. okay so 10 centimeters if i can find a 10 cm wide roll of toilet paper it should work just fine and we'll have ourselves a functioning lego toilet paper Holder. Well, that was fun. Thanks for coming along on this journey. Follow links in the bottom to get any of the stuff that we used here today. Don't forget, after the five and behind the nerd working title? Working title. 
are what we have to come up if you're a High Five Club member. Details down below. With all of that in mind, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you all. As always, High Five. Hey, I found some toilet paper. Oh. Look. Will it work? I don't know. Will it work? Do you need to, to wipe up your tears? I, I, I'm crying. Jeez. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Removed. Okay. I'm not. Okay. There we go. Uh. Yes. 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 We found working toilet paper. I'm going to go make a poop. Oh. I need an adult. Don't you think, like, if, like, you're doing this, it'd be like, ah, 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 ah. Uh.